What is happening, everybody? MG here. MG Covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title of this video, Why ROI is Extremely Important in Sports Handicapping and Sports Betting. We're going to talk about what ROI is, how to calculate, and I'm going to give you a real-life example from my uh, betting log here this past week. Um, before we do that, as always, greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel. Still have a subscriber-only video coming. Not sure if it's going to be on NBA Totals. I got another idea I'm working on, but I will have that video out hopefully this week. Uh, if you want to follow me on social media, MG Covers, cover spell with the Z. Give out a ton of content on social media um, on my Instagram page as well. We have something called Free Fridays, so if you follow me, you'll get all my lines for all sports on Fridays. All right, so let's dive into it. The example we're going to use, we're going to use a soccer example. But first, what I'd like to do is talk about what ROI is. Um, let's see, pull up the sheet here. Okay, real simple. ROI is an acronym that stands for Return on Investment. Sports betting is basically an investment vehicle. Um, how much money are you getting back? based on how much you're putting in and that's very important and let me give you one example if you're wagering on nba you love nba but you realize that your roi is two percent and you're wagering a lot of money on nba you're not wagering as much on nhl but your nhl roi is nine percent you shouldn't even be wagering on nba you should take all the money that you're wagering on NBA and put it into NHL. It's the same as how you would evaluate a stock. If you've got a, a stock or a mutual fund making 9% and the other one's making 2%, it's obviously advantageous to put more money in the mutual fund or stock that's yielding the making the biggest yield. So let's talk about how to calculate ROI in sports betting. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have a minus 122 wager. Let's just use it for these wagers. So you have to invest minus 122 to win back 100. And let's say you lost that wager. Your next wager, you wagered $120. So you have to invest 100. It's a plus 120 dog. So you only have to invest 100 to potentially get back 120. And let's say you win that wager. And then finally, let's say you bet a NBA total. You had to lay 110 to win 100. So the total amount invested is 110, and you won that one. So you lost your 122, you won the 120, you won the, the spread one for a total back. The total amount you got back was $98, and I'm just assuming you're wagering $100 here. So the total amount you invested, this is what you have to know about your ROI. So the total amount you made was 98. The total amount you invested was 122, 100, and 110 for a total amount of $332. So you take the amount that you made, which is this number here, divided by the total amount you have invested, which is this number, for an ROI of 29%. So in sports betting, if you can get that ROI close to probably like 10% long term, um, depends on the volume. If you play a lot of volume, it's going to be lower, less uh, if you play less volume, you could probably get it up there. Baseball, we had like a 15% ROI. I think year to I think year to date, um, I was probably somewhere around eight or nine percent. All right, so let me give you a let's talk about soccer real quick. Now, as you know, the way I'm playing soccer is it requires an extreme amount of capital. This is why ROI is very important. All right, so we're basically playing the draw side and the home side. But the way we're doing it is actually profitable. And I'll show you this. This is year-to-date numbers here. $4,500 made in Bundesliga, $1,600 in EPL. We're down $700 in French League. Um, Liga minus $128, but up in Series A, basically. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. Let me take it back down. Yeah, $1,700. $1, so the way we're wagering is profitable. However, I do believe that there is a – a uh, better way to do it, and I'm going to show you that on this screen here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the plays from this weekend via the model because I didn't exactly wager this way, but it, but I should have if I'd have played just the plays that had value, the basically 50-50 games via the model. And let me show you this. So, and let's just use $500 as an example, meaning I'm, I'm going to wager $500 on the home team, $500 on the draw side. So we're basically wagering 
a thousand dollars each for each match. So there were a total of eleven matches. So the total amount we wagering is going to be eleven thousand. Eleven thousand dollars doing it this way. Now, if you add up the results here, it would have been profitable. Eleven thirty would be the total amount made. The total amount risked would be eleven thousand. So again, how do we calculate the ROI? We take the amount that we made, divide that by the total amount that we risked for a 10% ROI. Again, still good. That's bas This is basically what I've been doing since the beginning of the year. But <clears throat> I started researching and thinking like, hey, I wonder if there is actually a better way to do this. Now, if you look over here, what I thought about doing was, let me check the spread line. And I went back and basically back tested and looked at the realistic line that I could get via the sports books that I'm using because a lot of times you can't sports books won't let you get you know there's only certain type spreads meaning sometimes they would only give you the pick line sometimes a minus two line and let me explain these on a spread line in soccer minus 0.25 means half your wager is on the draw half your wager is on the um the team to win so if the match draws you would lose half your wager on a minus 0.25. And obviously, if they win, you win all the wager. And a pick is basically a draw, no bet. If the match ends in a draw, it's a push. So you don't lose, but you don't win. And then a 0.25, if the match ends in a draw, then that means um, you win half the wager. And of course, if they win outright, you win all of it. So there's the three types. Now, instead of, in, instead of paying 500, on each each one of these, if we just wager basically 500 on the spread lines and play it the same way, here are the results from that. So we ended up making basically the same thing, 1075. But look at the amount we only had to invest. So we play a lot of juice this way, 500, 580, 520. You can see the spread lines, minus 116, minus 104 means we laid 520, minus 120, invest 600. Some of these were dogs, so on and so on. So the total amount that we had to risk was fifty nine forty six, but we end up making basically the same a thousand seventy five. So why is that important? That's important because we don't have to we don't have to invest as much and can yield the same amount. So if we look at our ROI, let's take a thousand seventy five divided by fifty nine forty six, and look what happens to our ROI. Now it's eighteen percent. So instead of investing eleven thousand. We only have to invest fifty nine forty six, and we can make the same thing. Or we could take this same eleven thousand, invest it into this, and you basically we're basically would double this. We would make twenty seventy five. Does that make sense? So this would be more obviously, but in essence, that I don't know if that's the exact numbers, but in essence, that's what it is. So we invest instead of paying eleven thousand here, we could just pay. Play a, a thousand aside, end up making two seventy twenty seventy five, invest in the same amount. It's a lot of ways to look at it. Or here's another way, and this is probably the way I'm going to go, which I think is a very good way. And I'm going to show you a backlog here in a second. But look at if we just played the home side, not even playing the away side. If we just play the home side, it actually was extremely profitable. It went six and ten. So we have. 11 wagers total. I'm going to use that same 500 example. So the amount we have risked is 5,500 and the amount of return is 3,145, right? Now, the home side won six out of 10 matches. That's not realistic for um, in soccer for a, the home team to win 60% of the time. I'm going to go back and look at December's log and show you the results of that. But just for the sake of this example, we would figure out our ROI this way which an ROI is 57%. So if we're looking at all the different ways to do this, probably more than likely, this would be the worst way to do it, playing the home side and the draw side. And then over here, the spread would be second best way to do it and probably the best way to do it would simply be play the home side, okay? Now, let's go over to this sheet here. This was back when... I originally back tested this back in December. We actually went live wagering this in January, but I was testing it, what I call the two thirds concept back in December. So this is the December log. And so what I did was the home teams here, uh, two thirds concept, wins, losses, units, 
and we had a total of 83 plays, 83 matches. So if we have a total of 83 matches and we have to invest money in both sides, that's a total of 166. Meaning if we're wagering the home side and the draw side, 166, right? This is the way you calculate RI if you just want to do it off of a number of matches. And I just graded one one game as one unit. So we ended up winning 24-12, a total of 24 units. So you take 24. Let's put this 166 here. So 24 divided by 166, and we get a pretty decent ROI. We get an ROI of 14 a point one five percent. But if we're wagering, yeah, let's just use a hundred dollars. So if you're wagering a hundred dollars on the home side and the draw side, you have to put at risk sixteen thousand six hundred. And another reason why ROI is important, and I'm going to show you that example. I'm I'm jumping ahead here a little bit, but I'm you could actually do it another way and not have to invest much, which means you could have a smaller bankroll and still make the same. All right, so in essence, if you're wagering $100 a play, you need you don't need 16,000, $16, but the total amount you risk would have been 16,600 just playing $100 a play. Now, we come over here. Let me show you this. This is absolutely fascinating. If we go up here, what I did was said, well, what if we just did the, the concept I showed you earlier where we just played the home team? So that means if the match draws, it's going to be a loss. If the away side wins, it's going to be a loss. And what do we know about soccer? More than likely, the away, the home side is going to win anywhere from 40% on the low end all the way up to, say, close, close to 50%, not really 50, 50%, probably around like 48%. The draw side is going to win probably about 35% of the time. Away side will win 25%. That is a statistical property. A statistical property is basically a fact about that sport. So if you look through the log here, we come all the way down. Now check this out. So we're basically risking, now we only risk, instead of risking 16,600 total, we only risk 83 total or 8,300. All right. So the way to calculate this, I can just make this 18.02 just so that they both look the same. So let's see what our yield is now. So we take 18.02 divided by 83, and we get a 21% yield. So we make just a little bit less as far as the dollar amount, but I think long-term this would probably level off, but we don't have to invest as much. Now, let's go over here and look at this. Let me show you this. So the home side won 48% of the time, which is really good. The draw side won 29%. The away side won 23%. So if you're watching this video and you're savvy about soccer, you've handicapped soccer, you said, well, MG, you're probably not going to be able to hit 48% long term. And you're probably right. So let's say hypothetically, let's take a very low number. Let's say the home side only won 40%, right? So we have 83 plays. So we'll take, uh, let me grab my calculator. I don't want to pull it up here. So we take, I can do it on this. What am I thinking? <laughs> I just had a brain freeze. So we take 83, whoops, equals 83 times 40%. And we get, whoops, what did I do there? I kind of messed that up. I just had a brain freeze. Give me one second. I'll figure this out. So 83 plays times 0.40. Oh, it's times 0.40. 33. My bad. Okay. So now we have. So there we go. So what I'm saying is, let's say that instead of hitting 48%, let's say we only hit 40% of our wagers. Now that means instead of having 40 wins, we're only going to have 33 wins. Now, if you come over here to the home side and we add these up, we averaged a 175 money line, okay, which is really good. So averaging 175 money line, we take 33, 33 times 175, and we would gross out 5775. Now we would lose um, 
all these draws. So that would be 2,400 lost. And then 19 would be, oh, I messed up. My bad, my bad, bad, bad. All right, so we have 83. Easy way to calculate this, you take 83 minus 33. So between the draw and the wayside, I know I'm going fast, we would lose a total of 50 wagers. Does that make sense? So if we only hit 40%, that means we're hitting 83 minus 33. We only hit, we're going to lose these right here. So that means we would lose basically 5 Gs. So the net amount profit now would be 775. So we calculate our ROI that way. We have a total amount invested of 83. Yep, so we would take now, I have to do a little bit differently, 83 divided by 8,300. And we get basically a 9%, a 9% ROI. So, and again, not you know the same amount in, invested as compared to this one. So. I know I went through that fast, but in essence, this is why ROI is extremely, extremely important. Now, in terms of bankroll, let me show you this example because I think this is good. So let's say, let's make this work. Let me get some of this off the screen, make it easy to understand. All right. So let's say you are, you're going to wager $100. Well, to, to, to do it this way, we had a total of 83 plays, right? So if we take 83 and we take 83, whoops, 83 divided by 31, 31 days. So you're averaging 2.67 plays, all right? Or you could basically say you're averaging $267 wagered per day. Now, an easy way to determine your bankroll requirements is just multiply this number times 20. So you take 267 times 20, and you're going to get 53.40. That's an easy way to the kind of process it, right? Oh, I actually did that wrong. This should be this number over here. My bad. Does that make sense? So if we're wagering 83, yeah, so if, if we're doing it just wagering the home side, we would only need to... <laughs> have uh, a bankroll of 53.40 because we're averaging 267 amount invested each day. This way over here, 166 is basically double that amount, right? So 166 wagers would be divided by 31, 535. So 535 times 20, you would need a, basically a 10,000 make roll. So the point I want to make in this is that the reason ROI is important is you wouldn't need to have, to do it this way, you need a bigger, bigger bankroll. To do it this way, just playing the home team or playing it using the spreads, you would you would not have to have a bigger bankroll. And as that relates to sports book, meaning you wouldn't have to load as much per se. All right. So I know that was kind of uh, long and hopefully that, that made sense to you. It was just something I was super excited about. So in, so in essence, the lesson to be learned here is you need to know your ROI because if there's a sport that you are investing in and you have a very low ROI, it might not even be worth it to wager on that sport, right? If you're just making like a 1% return, it's not even worth it. You shouldn't even be investing in that because it's not really worth it. You should maybe try to figure out another sport. So anyway, I hope that video helps. If you want access to these power rankings for soccer or college basketball, NBA, and we got baseball coming up in about three months, you can get access 50 bucks a month. Also get access to all my coaching videos. And if you want access to all my plays, that's a hundred bucks. You get everything I just mentioned. And if you join for an entire year, 500 bucks gives you access to everything on the site for an entire year. Link to joins in the description box. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.